All right, guys, we're doing another round of Dirty Debunks, believe it or not. Today, we're going to be going over a Broca video. Broca is one of the content creators I've been watching for a long, long time. Just because Black Clover content has always been something I've been interested in. I thought his theory videos were very interesting. He does a lot of research in his stuff. Not specifically research within his own manga, but rather research into the topics um, that the mangakas will um, look into. Like, uh, he has a lot of knowledge on the mythologies that inspire Black Clover and things of the like. He made a video about Yami versus Gojo, so we're going to take a look at that today. I agree with his outcome, most likely. I, I don't really, I haven't, I mean, I've thought about this fight a few times, but for the most part, I agree with his outcome, but his logic was what I had a real issue with and what I wanted to tackle in this video today, all right? So we're going to get started. Yami Tsukihiro, the unstoppable force versus Satoru Gojo, the immovable object. Okay, fun little intro. Both senseis are the main characters of their respective series, both out of commission at the current time in their manga. Oh yeah, this will have major spoilers, sorry. Are some of the most popular and powerful characters in all of fiction. Yami is often portrayed as one of the strongest characters in Black Clover, and Gojo gets that same representation for Jujutsu Kaisen. I heavily disagree, I think Yami's like barely top 10 in Black Clover right now. I'm not going to speak on Gojo's stance in JJK. I just, I don't want to get into whether 20 Finger Sakuna is stronger than Gojo. But what if these two had to step out of their respective universes and face off against each other? Who would win? Would Yami's unstoppable dimension slash be able to rip through Gojo's? Can, can, can literally be stopped. Jay, how about this? Jay, throw up that, uh, throw up that skin of Dante stopping dimension slash. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Unbreakable, limitless infinity. All of that will be answered and more in this video. I'd like to mention that a few months ago, I made a video about both of these characters in regards to their power. It doesn't require viewing, but if you watch this video, I would suggest you check out these two videos after for a deeper dive on each of the characters. I will have them linked below in the description. But anyways, I'm going to... Broku makes good videos, and you should watch his videos. ...briefly analyze the powers of each character and discuss what would happen if these two were forced to fight. Gojo, the biggest badass of... He does seem to equate the power systems to one massive power system. And I will be taking that on as he does it. Kaisen. He has some of the largest pools of cursed energy in the series, with the most broken curse techniques, Limitless and Infinity. So Limitless, at the base level, is just an innate technique that hails from the Gojo family. It is an inherited power. It grants this the user true. nigh absolute control over space with cursed energy manipulation. He took an interesting take on this. I don't have an issue with it, though. And it even goes down to the atomic level. Now, this expands to the infinity. That is the neutral form of Limitless. Now, it is basically the ability to slow things down infinitely so that they never hit Gojo in an automatic way. Remember that I'm watching this at 1.25 speed. Broku's pacing when he speaks is odd. But he is correct in saying this, that infinity is just slowing people down. Um... Like, to this extent, but it slows them down by doing something specific, which is creating walls at every fractional um, distance between Gojo and you. Just saying. A wall of defense that makes it so nothing can hit him because it will infinitely slow them down the closer they get to them. So, essentially Gojo, for the most part, cannot be hit. His technique advanced into a curse technique, Lapse Blue. This essentially allows him to pull different parts of space together. Gojo's abilities has a lot to do with spatial manipulation. Um... Uh, I hate explaining this. I'm going to have to go into, like, the Asta versus Gojo explanation. Blue functions in a very, very odd way. He doesn't he doesn't get too deep into it here, but he posted the scan that said it. Basically, he's manipulating the probability um, that matter will be in a certain space, which leads to conclusions like negative one matter being somewhere, which just pulls you in. Next is Curse Technique Reversal, Red. It's the opposite of Blue. It allows him to essentially push things together. It's a repulsive, repelling force. It repels matter. I, I assume Red is just plus one matter. We don't really... We don't get as in-depth an explanation of Red as we do of Blue. Um, I, I'm assuming Red is just manipulating the probability to plus one instead of minus one. And there's Hollow Technique Purple, the combination of Blue and Red. And essentially combines push and pull and in a sense, acts as offensive spatial magic and destroys and erase matter in its path. After that, Gojo does domain expansion, his unlimited void, and the- I hate every translation of Gojo's domain expansion. It, it literally doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how you translate it, it just always sucks. The domain expansion is in essentially creating a space with your cursed energy, which is like mana, but it's cursed energy in Jujutsu Kaisen. And when you do that, it vastly increases your powers and it makes it so your attacks will always hit. 
this is this is the first like hard not true. Um, what actually happens is that you are granted a certain technique, a single technique at that, that is guaranteed to hit. Not all of your attacks automatically hit. We saw this to be true specifically in Dogon's Domain. Um, and even though Shikigami can still, like, e even those guaranteed hit, it's only guaranteed to hit your cursed energy. It's not guaranteed to hit your body. Because now Bito is able to, like, react to these things before they touch him with his cherry blossom or whatever. Also, this would just be equated to Monozone, and, um, he, he does some weird things by, like, giving M Monozone the properties of domain expansion, but not the inverse, and w I'll talk about why that's, like, a hard pass for me. With this unlimited void and his domain expansion, he puts six months of information with 0.2 seconds into somebody's mind. So, I mean, somebody will process six months of information and in 0.2 seconds is a debilitating effect on the mind. This I hate to pause this again. Um, there is a huge issue with this thing. Within 0.2 seconds, Gojo is able to put in six months of information. But the volume extra where Gege actually explains Unlimited Void disagrees with this interpretation. What is actually happening is they are being fed a extremely low amount of information over and over and over again to the point where it feels like they're being flooded with massive amounts of information. So let's say you're looking at a line of things and the things goes apple, banana, carrot, right? This is how Gege explained it. Your mind would never get off of the A in apple. All you would get is A, 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 A. It's such a high refresh rate as though you feel as though you're getting this massive amount of information, but in actuality, you're not getting really anything, right? It's like, I don't know, I think Japanese, like, drip water torture is the best way that I could explain it. Like, this tiny amount of feeling gives this overwhelming amount of feeling when just done in the same way at the same time at this high interval. This is how he's defeated characters like Jogo before. And then he has the six eyes, which isn't greatly explained so far in Jujutsu Kaisen, but essentially allows him to have a nearly infinite amount of stamina when it comes to curse energy, as it allows him to use it at such a good degree that he just essentially nearly has an infinite amount of stamina. Now, this is Gojo's correct. Abilities, but how strong is he, really? We know that he is pretty fast, being in at least in the massively hypersonic plus tiers of speed. This means that he can fight at velocity. I, I agree that he's massively hypersonic. Massively hypersonic plus is definitely a stretch. Velocities of hundreds of miles per second. This is all based on Maki being far faster than a bullet, and Gojo being far faster than her. In terms of attack potency, Gojo has been scaled to be far greater than large mountain level. This is because the special grade cursed spirit, Jogo, is large mountain level. He he basically uses the same scaling that I use for Gojo and Asa versus Gojo, which is um, Gojo over Maki in, in to a great degree, and Gojo over Jogo's mountain creation feat. And Gojo is far stronger than him. This would mean that Gojo's conventional durability would be comparable to that level, but of course, durability is just a completely different universe for Gojo. The infinity allows him to manipulate the layers of space between him and the attacks. But that's what I was talking about. If you heard that editing slip, it's it seems like he's cutting together multiple clips, but I don't care. Infinitely slowing them down so that they never hit him. How Only a good? few instances of attacks bypassing this infinity has been shown, and I'll discuss of this when it is relevant to Yami's attacks later. And of course, his hacks attacks repel space, which is red, pull in space, which is blue, yeah. or rip apart space, and that is purple, like I mentioned prior. Purple may or may not travel at faster than light speeds. Um, uh, look into Richard Forward's theory of imaginary mass, and you'll find that the theory that Gege bases purple off of is actually um, a theory on tachyon particles, which would have to travel at speeds faster than light. He also can do reverse cursal technique, which is essentially healing, and this is part of how he keeps his stamina so high as well. Yami Sukuhiro uses mana as an energy system, a supernatural form of energy that is similar to cursed energy. Mana is used to create magical spells as well as enhance the physical capabilities of characters. The mana fuels mm -hmm. his dark magic, though magic is not the only thing that is going well for Yami. He also has immense physical prowess, as he was stated by the Black Clover creator, Yuki Tabata, to physically be the strongest character in the series at the time. I don't know why Broku decided to use that clip, but okay. Of the Witch's Forest Arc. He also uses a form of life energy from his homeland called Ki. This acts as a sort of sixth sense precognition that increases his reaction speed, allowing him to predict his opponent's moves before they can make them. It does not actually increase his reaction speed, it just gives him a greater amount of reaction time. This will probably be the shortest dirty debunks, just because most of this information is correct, 
But what Broku gets wrong, he gets really wrong, and I felt I needed to make the video. He pairs all of these abilities with, with his katana blade, as instead of fighting like a mage, he fights in the ways of a swordsman. He uses the dark magic to form the magic into large black slashes that essentially extends the reach and power of his blade. He can create black holes, which suck in any attacks. They just have a size limit. As a they do not suck in any attacks. I, I think he goes into it, but it's like it has to be close to the black hole. If attacks are too large, it will be too much for it. He has a spell called Dimension Slash that cuts actual space, and he has used it to even cut offensive spatial magic that literally just erases matter. Death Thrust is even stronger than his regular Dimension Slashes. Okay, Death Thrust is faster than his regular Dimension Slash. Um, it being quote unquote stronger is a really weird thing for him to say due to the fact that Dimension Slash is able to cut space and dimensions, like while Death Thrust just negates people's magic and blows holes in them. It acts like super condensing mana into his blade and launching it out like a cannon. Not only is this spell stronger than Dimension Slash, Death Thrust is stronger than Dimension Slash, but it is far faster and can be spam. Like I said earlier, Yami it uses his magic spam. to reinforce his physical capabilities. Mana Skin is a high form of reinforcement magic that covers the body in a layer of mana, specializing in defense, but also increasing other physical capabilities like speed and strength. A step true. above Mana Skin is Mana Zone, which follows similar principles, but instead borrows nature's mana to add to one's own store. This creates a zone of magic around the user, massively increasing their stats. The guy so, <clears throat> there's something he forgets to take part in in Mana Zone. Any time when someone is using a monozone spell around themselves, you cannot use um, a spell inside of inside of their monozone, right? So whenever Yami uses Black Moon, which is a spell where he combines his black hole with uh, his monozone, you can't use a spell inside of its radius. Um, Xenon uses a move called Monozone Spatial Domination. You cannot use a spell inside of its radius unless you're special loved by mana you know which was a weird thing that i don't think anyone in black clover or in, in jujutsu kaisen will have access to but i book even states this to be a many times amp in power it vastly increases reaction speed and allows the user to spam attacks from <clears> all directions <throat> within the area slightly like domain expansion ever so look at what it says here this is why while i love black clover i hate black clover fans they've taken this to say like Oh, this person gets many times faster. They get many times stronger. What it actually says here is that the sense of magical or magical power and magical responsiveness also increase many times over. That means not that they got many times stronger and faster, but the feeling of their ability to output magical power, right? Like their their passive aura. And the responsiveness of their magic is many times faster, or as many times greater. That would just mean that there's like a, a lower amount of latency in creating spells, and that whenever someone's trying to sense their mana, those two like things would be multiple oh, multiple times greater. Ugh. So slightly. It's just frustrating. With mana zone, Yami can use special spells like Dimension Slash Equinox, which is much more powerful than the regular version of Dimension Slash. It also allowed him to destroy Dorothy's Glamour World, which is an infinite space. This is it also allows him to fuse okay. mana zone. And it's Dorothy definitely creates this. It's definitely a dimension. Um, whether the dimension is infinite in size, I agree that it is. Um, and therefore, you have this like high universal feat at the very least. Um, I think it's a uni plus feat. But uh, Yami does, in fact, destroy it. Um, <clears throat> the issue with this is he destroys it with a monozone technique. Any monozone technique negates the mana of others and negates the spells of others. So it could have been a property of monozone destroying her spell rather than the spell itself having the ability to destroy dimensions. Just saying. As black hole together, creating black moon, which erases spells around him. Now we know even early versions of Yami were faster than light and mountain level as he scaled above a younger Jack who shaved the mountain away when they fought. And Potri used light magic, which was stated to be light speed, then it got faster and he was parrying volleys of them. Asta in his base form was calculated to be over 300 times the speed of light when he outran Mariolona's attack spells. Now this, he says calcs will be linked below. All we get is the Mariolona speed calc that I used for Modder vs. Julius. This got recalced by the way and it comes out to something like 40 times FTL on reaction speed. But there is no calc for Asta speed blitzing this. 
Remember, Yami is physically above base Asta, unless he would also scale to this feat and then pour in his own mana stores and mana. That is a completely different base Asta, Broku. Completely different base Asta. Um, the base Asta that uh, speed blitzes Mario's attack was one that had just, or one from a significantly later arc who had gotten stronger and faster than the one who Yami was stronger than in the Witch's Force. On his own, on top of this, then he is well over <clears throat> massively faster than Light Plus in tiers of speed, which is over 1,000 times the speed of light and above. He can also easily be scaled to con- He- that's- that speed scaling was just wrong. Just had to say that. ...tree level, since he scales above the Fire Spirit Salamander, who in the guidebook vaporized the sea with a swing from its claws, and that is a feat that isn't calculated to be country level. There are a lot of ways to scale him much higher, though, as even the Dark Disciple explosions were scaled to be multi-continental level. Oh, I've been looking for this calc! Holy cow! A more consistent calculation of this comes out at country level. Um, I think they use... Yeah. The, 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 one of the main issues with this calc is that they use vaporization whenever vaporization cannot be shown to be present. If you use pulverization, it comes out to around country level plus. There you go. Yami would scale far above those explosions. Also, there are ways to get him to planetary as he scales to 80% Dante, who can create black holes, and Yami can also create his own black holes. Remember, a... This is where the video really devolves. Black hole the size of a coin has the mass of the Earth, and Dante's singularity black hole was many times the size of a coin. So, Dante has a technique called gravity singularity. It somewhat behaves like a black hole, yes. The issue with gravity singularity is, while it can be expanded and condensed, like he says here, it does not have any any like property or it does not have the property of power that would be correlated with a black hole of the same size it's it's just a name fallacy it's just like saying vegeta's big bang attack is universal because it's called a big bang attack and um it, one of the apologisms for that is that well he can control his key like no <laughs> it, it, it's just an unjustified like association fallacy people will say that it isn't a black hole that dante's magic is not a actual black hole but it is titled a singularity, which is the, essentially the origin point of a black hole, and it acts like a black hole, and it stems from his gravity magic, which does act within the general laws of physics of... By the way, a singularity on its own would create an event horizon, which Dante's singularity does not. Gravity. How before, he could warp space by compressing his gravity magic. People... Dante has, like, the ability to control force. It's odd. It's like, they call it gravity magic, but he's not, like, increasing the mass of anything. Um, we'll say it's not a black hole because it didn't destroy the world like it should have when it went through and destroyed a mountain, but that's because... If truly this thing had a uh, had the mass, right, or the pull of a black hole the size of my thumb even, a human body would be absolutely taken in upon it. Like, there would be nothing left. The idea that Dante's singularity spell scales to the size of... or scales to a black hole of a similar size is just preposterous. Remember, people have control over their magic and Black Clover. Dante doesn't want to destroy the world. He wants to bring the devils out to cause malice and destruction. He can't have malice if he completely destroys the world. He needs to have the devils out to cause chaos. So he would not want the world to be destroyed. Also, Yami's own Black Hole was said to be able to cancel out Dante's, which further implies that Yami's is the level of a Black Hole. If I hit him with Black Moon, they might cancel each other out, but Black Moon has the property of being able to cancel out other magic. It is not that Yami's Black Hole scales to Dante's Black Hole. It's that the property of being able to cancel out magic would apply here, and the spell would fizzle out. Again, so he is easily country level, with sound evidence that he is multi-continental, and even some evidence that he is multi-planetary. But his specific attack, Dimension Slash Equinox, essentially bypasses durability by cutting space, as he was yes. able to destroy Dorothy's infinitized glamour world, thus giving him high universal attack potency through hacks. Now I'm sure by now that you can tell, when it comes to the stats, attack potency, speed, durability, Yami has Gojo to a huge advantage. But, of course, the hacks of Gojo are insane. Infinity and Limitless paired with the six eyes, giving him nine infinite stamina. Of course, you're thinking, it doesn't matter how strong or how fast Yami is. He will not be able to hit Gojo in his infinity. And then, he will activate Unlimited Void and defeat Yami. But no, Gojo's infinity isn't actually Limitless. It has shown distinct limitations. Yes, when in this a is domain true. expansion of an opponent, he will be hit regardless of having his defenses activated. This is confirmed when he fights Jogo. So... <clears throat> this is a property of domains that they cancel out the technique of another 
It is not. Okay, you, you'll see what he says. Basically, Broku tries to say that um, spatial manipulation of any kind has the property of, like, negging infinity. When it's just any kind of domain, which is a form of spatial manipulation, has the property of negging infinity. Like, he correlates it to the idea of spatial manipulation when he should just be correlating it to the property of it being a, a domain. He is also entrapped in the prison realm, which essentially used spatial hacks to trap him in a different plane and actually... It is a sealing hacks with the ability to seal cursed energy and therefore seal Gojo's infinity. ...touched him. And when the three cursed spirits used simple domain against him, an offshoot of domain expansion, which again is creating a space, they were allowed to hit him because actually what what's funny is domain amplification domain amplification simply has the same property of domain of negating techniques just like simple domain does there was also an instance where a cursed item could hit him despite his defenses being activated there are multiple cursed items and cursed techniques that are able to disturb and eliminate other people's cursed techniques miguel's whip or miguel's cloth is one of those but that means in three of the four cases shown of how Gojo's infinity was bypassed, it was shown to be through spatial hacks, which does not bode well for Gojo, as Yami has several spatial hacks that would likely slice right through his defenses and split him in two. Whenever other people are able to manipulate force in space and gravity, people like nearing the level of um nearing the level of Yami, we see this in the Dante fight. Dante's gravity singularity is able to stop dimension slash, it like makes it turn. You could easily apply this to, like, if you think Gojo is sufficiently strong, you could also apply this to Gojo and say that, like, Infinity would be able to, would be able to manipulate Dimension Slash. Again, Limitless and Infinity are all about spatial manipulation. This is stated over and over again. Dimensional is Slash true. is a spatial hacks, even easily cutting long versus offensive spatial magic, and that was just the regular version. A black hole. Yeah, if you want to say that, like, um, Yami has, like, resistance to spatial mat or spatial hacks but because he's able to um what is it overcome other spatial hacks like that's fine that's just not what broku's argument is which is where i my problem lies well would feasibly affect gojo and yami has that and i get it now you're saying that gojo he would activate unlimited void before yami can strike and thus is overloaded but i mean no yami's just too fast Yami's mana zone black moon should protect him from the unlimited void. His dirt. Um, no. If he had black moon active, yeah. But if he had black moon active, infinity would already be negated. And if Gojo were to activate immeasurable void before, if we're using the same principle that you're applying one way, I'm going to apply it the other way and say that Yami's mana just like gets negged. Like he can't amplify himself with it at all. Or you can't use any spells, sorry, because spells would be equivalent to test technique. Her ability is far higher than Gojo's attack potency, and is paired with a black hole in the mana zone that erases magical spells around him by doing spatial manipulation. This would mean that Yami would very likely be protected from Gojo's mind hacks, even in his domain, not just through- No. This only means that Yami would be protected from Gojo's mind hacks if Black Moon was already open. Even in Black Clover, you can't open some- you can't open a spell in somebody else's mana zone spell. It's the same thing in JJK. You can't operate your technique in someone else's domain expansion. Through sheer durability that Monozone would give him, but also the black hole that manipulates space and distorts Gojo's cursed energy before it can affect Yami. It wouldn't disturb Gojo's cursed energy, you just stop him from making a spell or using technique. Like, people can still amp themselves in domain expan or in um, Monozones. Can't use a spell. Like, Xenon even thinks it's possible that, like, you know, he's just able to keep his spell form stabilized just because he's so strong. Just saying. Okay, and now you're saying, but what if Yami doesn't activate this before Gojo activates Unlimited Void? Well, it doesn't really matter still. Gojo's combat speed is massively hypersonic plus. Yami said the very least is faster than light. This means that even if Gojo activated his own domain before Yami could activate his defenses, Yami would be able to activate it in the meantime. No, he would. Uh, I mean, I guess it, it matters if you think, like, the properties of domain apply once it's opened or they're just active as long as it's being activated don't know don't care because the domain would be moving so slow in comparison to what he has fought before as this is him early in the series before mana zone pairing faster than light attacks these attacks would each be at least hundreds of times faster than the expanding domain and yet yami easily reacts to and deflects them then 
The next what if I always get when debating the topic is, well, what if Yami just does not activate his defenses against Gojo? My answer to that is, if you need to make this many scenarios of Yami acting stupid just to give Gojo a W, then it really just shows that Yami is the clear victor here. No, Yami's like an incredibly cocky fighter. Like he'll sit there and light a cigarette and just come at you casually. It's not like he starts off with Dimension Slash unless someone he loves is in danger. He'll just pull up with his katana and just try and try and box you. Even in like even when he was getting jumped by the third eye, he doesn't like activate defenses when he knows they're coming. He just waits and defends. I think it's actually pretty fair to say that Yami wouldn't activate defenses before Gojo like pulled up on him. Sure, there are certain situations where Gojo wins. But for every situation where Gojo wins, there are many more where Yami wins. Like if Yami just activated Dimension Slash from the jump and split Gojo in two. Yeah, if Yami were to act completely out of character, um, it is more than likely that he would win. I agree. Or hurl a death rest and erase his torso. Or just ignoring the fact that Yami would have his Mana Zone activated, which would defend him, especially if it was Mana Zone Black Moon. It's only Mana Zone spells that are able to defend people <laughs> from um from another person's magic. It's not like. Just their raw monozone negates anyone. We know this to be true because Lola Pacheca had her monozone extended all the way throughout the Heart Kingdom, and Vonica was still able to body her, like, twice. <laughs> Not just once, twice. But anyways, guys, this is pretty much it for my video of Yami versus Gojo. It's really just unlucky for Gojo to go against somebody with spatial hacks. If Yami just had something like fire magic and was just strong and didn't have any hacks, Gojo would probably take the W hugely. Mana Zone or Mana Skin still might protect Yami, but it, it's not like a guarantee, like Mana Zone plus a Black Hole. So combining Mana Zone and Black Hole together, Yami's gonna be fine and Gojo's domain. Gojo is my favorite character in Chuchu Kaisen. Yami is my second favorite character in Black Clover. So honestly, it's. Bro, I'm gonna be honest. I do not fuck with Yami. I, I guess that that's like all that's important from this video. I don't like Yami. I think Yami is like one of the most uninteresting characters in Black Clover. I find him to be super, like, two-dimensional and stagnant. This all said, Broku's video is pretty good. Um, I, I just, there's, uh, there was a lot that needed to, I'm, like, trying to dance around this. I, I like Broku's content. I think he can be a little assumptuous in some of his theories, but I enjoy watching him as a YouTuber. He's one of the people that I style my channel after. Um, I think that just like whenever I first talked to him about like the Magic Knights versus Frieza, um, he was a little assumptuous um, in what he was saying and could have done some more research. But dirty debunks are dirty debunks. This one wasn't too dirty. It was pretty nice. Um, what is anti-magic should be coming out soon. God, I hope you all forgot about that video because I know I did. But, um, if you want to see more content from me, make sure to subscribe. It's all coming out in the future. See ya.